And that's where ABC 7's uh, anchor Emily Burris begins our team coverage tonight on Skyline Boulevard, where this suspect was taken down just hours ago. Emily, what can you tell us? Yeah, Jeff, as you mentioned, we are at that third and final scene here tonight. This is where police put a stop to this gunman's rampage. I want to show you the scene behind me here. It's 11 o'clock at night, four hours after this all came to an end and still a very active scene here this evening. Now, further down the road, it is still blocked off by police tape, but the gunman's car is still on the road here. It has since been covered with a tarp, uh, but this is where uh, cars coming at a high rate of speed down this road were met with police this evening. Uh, police telling us earlier that the gunman confronted them violently. That's when he was shot and killed by police. Neighbors here witnessing all of it going down. They say it was a terrifying scene. A violent night on a quiet Cape Coral street. Neighbors watching as a suspected gunman was taken down by police. And I stood up, walked about three, said, hey, what's going on? The same moment shooting started and I jumped back into the garage. Wolfgang Seliger watching from his driveway. I told my wife, she was inside, hey, you're missing the firework. At that time, the suspect was still armed and violently resisting officers, and our officers engaged him, killing the suspect at the scene. It was 50, 60 in a couple of seconds. It was really loud. Police say two other passengers in the car were hurt. Tonight, they're being treated for their injuries at the hospital. Neighbors left in shock as they wait for any answers to a traumatic sequence of events. Well, it's tragic. It's painful. It's shocking because, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't happen here. Now, as police continue to investigate tonight, they say that they will likely be here uh, much later into the evening. They say this is a fluid and ongoing active investigation. They do anticipate uh, conducting search warrants as they work to learn more about the gunman in this case. We have not learned yet the information of the uh, victims involved names as the victims advocates work to notify next of kin uh, and talk to the other victims who were wounded in this sequence of events. Uh, but police did tell us tonight that we can expect uh, much more information uh, coming out tomorrow morning. ABC 7 will, of course, be following this and keeping you updated uh, as we learn much more in this case. Tonight, we are live in Cape Coral. Emily Burris, ABC 7. And Emily was just. Let's take you back right now to the scene of breaking news tonight in Cape Coral. Here is what we have learned so far tonight. A gunman went on a rampage about dinner time, killing two and hurting others. Right now, police believe he randomly targeted victims. Tonight he's dead, killed by police. Officers took that suspect down at Skyline and Cape Coral Parkway. You see the three uh, scenes on your map right there. ABC 7 anchor Emily Burris is there right now. And Emily, a couple questions for you here. First of all, why do police say that they were forced to shoot this suspect? Well, Jeff, police described this suspect as very violent. They say when they confronted him here at this final scene, he was still armed. Uh, they wouldn't get into the details of what exactly went down between the shooter and police, only saying that he engaged officers violently and officers felt that they were forced to shoot and kill this gunman to put a stop to the violence that had occurred this evening. That the first shooting happened when this guy fired at a motorcyclist is there any chance that this might have been road rage? Yeah, I was at the press conference earlier where Sergeant Costin with uh, Cape Coral Police said that to uh, talk about a motive at this point would be speculation. They hope to learn more about what exactly led up to all of these shootings as they continue their investigation. Yeah, certainly a question that will be asked tomorrow. Now, in the 21st uh, century era, um, there are cameras everywhere. Were any of these shootings uh, caught on police cameras? That is something that we uh, hope to find out. Uh, Sergeant Costin did mention that uh, as not all officers wear body cameras, not all of their cruisers have dashboard cameras, but they will be going through uh, any potential video from any officers involved, body camera footage, dash camera footage, and uh, we hope that some of that will be made available to us once they have completed their investigation. And we are about five to six hours after the, uh, the multiple shootings happened tonight. Certainly seems like we know bare bones details at this point from police. You were at the news conference tonight uh, at the Cape Coral Police Department, and I watched from the newsroom. Why didn't they say more, uh, you know, elaborate further? 
Right, right. And we certainly asked them, uh, wanting to know some more details in this case, but police say that really their biggest concern right now is protecting the victims involved. Uh, two other people besides the gunman killed tonight, several others hurt, and police are describing this as a very fluid, a very active investigation. They say that uh, they're still speaking with the people involved. Victims advocates were on scene all evening, and they're, of course, uh, speaking with the families uh, of those who lost their lives. Once they have notified all of the people involved in the case and they feel that they've properly reached out to next of kin, uh, we expect to learn much more information. And they did tell us tonight they do plan on releasing much more information tomorrow morning after they've had a chance to really process all of the scenes involved. Jeff. All right, Emily Burris reporting live for us tonight. ABC 7 will have continuing coverage of the shootings in Cape Coral, uh, starting with Good Morning Southwest Florida, 5 in the morning tomorrow. You're